This is part two of the video tutorial for the Puzzle Cube Design Project. For this tutorial, we'll be using the assembly file. Now we should be using this tutorial after you've created all five of your Puzzle Cube parts, which you can see the icons are down here from the first tutorial. I'm going to go and start an assembly file. Now what assembly file does is it's going to take your part file and put it together. So now that I've opened this up, I'm going to go on the upper left hand corner and go to place. I prefer to use place, so I'm going to click on here and just go to place component. Or the shortcut is actually the letter P that I see here. Now once I go to place, it's going to send me to this window, which will let me find my parts that I've created for this project. And I'm going to go to Puzzle Cube Part 1 and hit open. What you'll see is now I have, I haven't clicked on anything yet, but I have this rectangle that's going to be one of the sides of the Puzzle Cube. I'm going to click and all of a sudden it'll bring me to a nice metric view of my cube, my part. Now I'm going to create a part that has four puzzle pieces. So for the purpose of this exercise, I'm going to put four cubes together. When I'm done with the four parts that I'm going to assemble together, I'm going to right click or again I'm going to hit escape or use the escape button on the keyboard to get me out of the place feature. Now when I take my mouse and click on these boxes, you can tell my user browser right here that all my cubes have become parts on my screen right here. So I'm going to join and connect these cubes to make a puzzle piece. I'm going to use the constraint button. And when the constraint button comes on, I'm going to go to mate. Now there's other features. We'll use these later in the course. For now I'm going to go to mate and you're going to see the solution has two options. I have mate and I have flush. I'm going to mate the two edges here. So I'm going to click on this surface. I'm going to click on this surface and you'll notice how the two cubes automatically came together. When I hit apply, it's going to lock these two cubes. I'm going to cancel out just to show you what happens. So it's mate, it's still on the surface. You can't tell so no matter how I move these, it's still right there. I think I might be confusing you, so let me complete this. I'm going to go back to constraint, and I'm going to go to flush, and I'm going to flush this surface with this surface. Okay, it might look confusing. I'm going to flush this with this surface, and now you'll see how these two parts are actually locked how I just constrain them together. And when I look at my user browser and I'm going to unload, you'll see that I've made it these two. I flush the surface and I flush the side surface. Now I'm going to create another part or another mate. I'm going to mate this surface with this surface. Hit apply. I'm going to flush this edge with this edge. Hit apply. I'm going to flush this edge with this edge, hit apply, and now you notice that I have taken cube 4, made it, and flushed it with another cube. I'm going to take and I'm going to constrain this cube over here, hit apply, I'm going to flush it with this edge, hit apply, I'm going to use my uh, little orbit here to rotate it, give myself a little bit more of an angle. And once I've done that, I've now completed, I can use my block here, I use my isometric top right corner, you can see how I've created a puzzle cube part, so that's an easier way to see it. And everything here has been mate, flush, flushed, mate, flush, flushed, I can test it out and make sure none of my parts are moving because they are all constrained. When I'm done with that, I'm going to go to File, Save As, and you'll see my example. 
it's going to save it as a .iam. So I'm going to name this puzzle piece, puzzle cube design piece one and hit save. 